well, hello and God bless you all. Um, I've been thinking all day on what I wanted to teach on and um, came to my heart that obviously Lawrence has been doing this grace, love and truth thing um, and Lawrence has taught a lot on grace. I've done quite a lot on love so I decided to go with the truth and it's just been in, burning in my heart all day. Um, when I first started looking into scriptures about truth, like at first I didn't, obviously I knew there'd be quite a lot about truth and a lot in the scriptures but I didn't really think it would go into as much detail as it ended up coming out with. Like, not only truth, things such as integrity, character, um, something like, like just a lot of things ended up coming out from this one word, truth. Um, so when I looked it up, the word truth in one place was defined as sincerity in action, character and utterance. Um, one of the most famous verses about truth in the Bible is obviously the verse that Jesus Christ said, which we can all go to, which is John 14. And in uh, verse 6, it says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So, like, this is basically the scripture that we build our lives upon because like God's saying he is the way, the truth, like, and that's who like we're following and we know that everything that comes out of God's mouth is truth. Like he's said it in the scripture and like, that he's not a man that he should lie. So um, obviously as well as Christians, like we believe that every word in the Bible is truth. And we believe that that is the truth that we live by like in our lives. Um, so, firstly, I want us to go to Psalms. And it's chapter 119. And in verse So I've got a different translation Bible here, is the New Living Translation. So I'm going to read it from here because I think this, the scriptures in here are just really like they're simplified and they're explained. So for me personally, I find it a lot easier to understand what the scriptures are actually saying. Um, 119. Quite right. And here it says, All your words are true, all your just laws will stand forever. So they're saying that like all of his words are true and his laws will stand forever. So if his laws stand forever, then we are to stand forever by those laws. Like and looking into this just made me realise that it's not just about truth. When you look at truth, it also comes into faith and believing because you've got to have the faith and the believing to believe in that truth mm. because like you're believing that that is the truth and that that's the way that you're going to live your life and you're going to live your life abiding to those truths so it also comes into believing and um, what are you going to decide to believe obviously we've all chosen to believe in God and Jesus Christ and so that's the way that we have to live our lives um in we will go to Ephesians Sorry, there's quite a lot of us flipping about. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to get this off then. It's um, Ephesians chapter 1. And in verse 13, it says, And now you also have heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit, whom he promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us everything he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. This is just one more reason for us to praise our glorious God. 
So again, it's showing that God and Jesus Christ speak the truth and that we are believing this good news that God is telling us. So we believe that we are saved and that God is going to come through with all those promises. And again, that comes down to faith because once we pray to God that we want something or we need something doing in our life or we've got needs, we are solely believing that God is going to come through and we're believing that truth that he says there, that he's promised us. We've got to believe that that is true and that that's what we're going to live our lives around. Um, uh, oh, sorry. Flip back to Psalms. There is quite a few in Psalms. And chapter 86. Six and it's verse eleven. Teach me your ways, O Lord, that I may live accordingly to your truth. Grant me purity of heart, that I may honour you with all my heart. I will praise you, O Lord, my God. So, like, not only are we believing God's truth, but like we are wanting to live accordingly to His truth. So there's also like God telling you like, this is my truth, but then we've got to decide that we are going to live according to that truth so that we're going to abide by all the things that God says in his laws that we need to do, like loving our neighbor and loving God. Like we've then got to abide by those truths and remember those truths in our day to day lives. And when I was reading through this, like, well, it was funny because when we were speaking before, like I started teaching in the fellowship, a lot of the things that were all coming out were like based all around this because Lawrence was explaining about like if somebody said to him, look, can you tell me where I need to go, what I need to do, like Lawrence needs to speak truthfully to that person. And then obviously came around the room and spoke to everyone. But honestly and truthfully, and sometimes that's quite hard to do, but when we were like in the fellowship it suddenly like dawned on me like god just like kind of threw it at my heart that like this is where i believe that truth this then comes into the part of integrity and your values and character because say somebody did come up to you and they said like they wanted to know like what what is it you think of me what do you think that i need to be doing in my walk to get better in my walk and to have a better relationship with god someone comes up to you and says that obviously you need to be completely honest with that person and tell them look this is how it is and this is what you need to do but like i know it's not always the easiest thing to speak the absolute truth to someone because sometimes you can hurt someone by telling them the truth mm. but i don't know the saying for word for word but there is a saying that like i'd rather be hurt with the truth than be hurt with a lie mm. and it is true because when it comes to it you would rather you would don't want to be lied to yeah. and if somebody loves you like lawrence and kim as our leaders they love us so they go, they're going to tell us the truth mm. but then it made me see as well that although you've got to tell those people the truth it's the way in which you tell them the truth mm. like you could if somebody says oh like wants to know how to be better in their walk or whatever like if you go to them or like full full blast at them and say look you're not doing this right you're not doing that right you need to do this you need to do that that all may be well and true but if you say it with a wrong heart they're not going to take it into their heart and they're not going to want to do the things that you're telling them because if it hurts your heart you're pretty much going to be like well why do I have to listen to what you've got to say to me? Like, because you're going to be hurt more than anything. Whereas if somebody asks you and then you calmly say to them and like explain through what they need to do and why they need to do it and how it's going to benefit them because the things we're being taught is only to benefit ourselves. We're not going to be told it otherwise. If it's going to get us down and back in the dumps, then it's not even going to be anything that's going to be taught because it's the truth that we're being taught. And so this was what made me realise the part of integrity is that like your integrity requires like your values and your character so if your character like you've got to have the character to realize like who you're speaking to and who like who it is that's come forward to you and asking you those questions and how you address that person because that shows your character because you may have somebody that comes to you and asks you something and they might be quite a strong-hearted person so you know that you can pretty much say to them, look, this is how it is, this is what you need to do, and they'll 
take it with a pinch of salt and they'll be happy and they'll go get on and they'll do it and it won't even affect them. Whereas somebody else could come up to you and they might be more of a soft person, you know, with a tender, gentle, like not saying that the other person might have a gentle, tender, gentle heart, but you know, they might get offended that little bit easier. So you've got to have that integrity and that character, like that character in your heart to look at the people and think, right, well, this person I could offend quite easily. So I need to think of how I'm going to say this to this person. How am I going to portray, portray the truth to this person? Do you know what I mean? It's just amazes me of looking into this truth like all the other things that can come out of it um anyway we'll keep moving on um uh if we move to john john chapter eight and verse 31 Uh, Jesus said to the people who believed in him, you, you are truly my disciples. If you keep obeying my teachings, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Like, this shows that Jesus was also teaching the truth. And it's those truths that God's given us, they're the things that's going to set us free. Like, they're the things that's going to bless us in our lives. Like, God wouldn't give us these truths and say, live according to those truths if it wasn't going to give you a blessed and happy, abundant life. Like, we know that everything God does for us is because he wants us blessed and he just wants us to have such a great, abundant life. And, like, we sometimes we just miss, we miss the point in that. That, like, that is all God wants for us. He wants us to live such a blessed and happy life. And we take ourselves away and give ourselves the, like, rubbish, like, life with no abundance. Like, but when we look to those truths and just read upon those truths and see... The heart that really that God really has for us and that he really wants those things for us and just realizing those truths and that obviously Jesus Christ was teaching the exact same thing to all his disciples um, then I've got a couple of other scriptures that we can turn to that say about it in 2nd Timothy and chapter 2 verse 15 Work hard so God can approve you. Be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly explains the word of truth. Now this like opened my heart again because it opened another avenue into truth that not only do we seek the truth, we live the truth, we've got to live according to God's truth, is that we are actually the ones that have got to speak the truth again to others and we've got to make sure that we are correctly explaining the truth to people because if not, we could have somebody like going and living their lives not according to God's truth. Mm -hmm. And we've got to remember that we've got to correct, like, correctly as we can explain the truth to them and the things that they need to do in their lives. Um, sorry, back to... Uh, actually, we'll go to First Peter because we're closer to that. First Peter, and uh, it's chapter one. And in verse twenty two. Now you can have sincere love for each other as brothers and sisters because you were cleansed from your sins when you accepted the truth of the good news. So see, it, so see to it that you really do love each other intensely with all your hearts. So like we were cleansed from our sins when we accepted the truth of the good news. Like how amazing is that? Like all we had to do is accept that like God and Jesus Christ like were our Lord saviors and like we're cleansed from all our sins just because of that truth. And like, it's really lovely what it says before in this foundation that, that 
now you can have sincere love for each other as brothers and sisters. Like having that sincere love for each other as brothers and sisters is having that heart to be able to honestly and truthfully speak to your brothers and sisters because like it's all good me speaking obviously about Lawrence and Kim being leaders and having to speak to us like truthfully if we come to them but it's the same between all of us as well like we're brothers and sisters in Christ so we have to speak the truth the same to one another and be honest with each other like obviously I'm not saying just go up to a person and say well I don't like this and you sh I think you should do this of course not but you know we can just be honest and like with our sharings and things in our lives, we can be honest with one another because we know that we're, we've got that closeness. We're like brothers and sisters, so we can share those things with one another because we know that like we all go through similar experiences together and it's just nice to be able to share that with one another and have that honesty and truth in it. Um, if we go to Psalms, back to Psalms. Psalms chapter 26. and verse 3 no, we're going to start in 2 um, I think there's a really good translation in there um, it says from verse 2 put me on trial Lord and cross examine me test my motives and affections for I am constantly aware of your unfailing love and I have lived according to your truth like obviously the word truths in here and that's what I'm teaching about but that's just this whole scripture just like really like melt like just think is a really interesting scripture like put me on trial Lord and cross examine me examine me test my motives and affection like God can like test our motives and affection for him and like we can show God that we really have that like heart for him and that love for him and like we are aware of his unfailing love for us and that's why we are living according to his truth because of that unfailing love for us like he's put those things in his word of truth to benefit us and to make our lives like such a great abundant life and um if you move to proverbs as well this opens up something else as well proverbs Chapter 12, verse 22. The Lord hates those who don't keep their word, but he delights in those who do. Mm -hmm. So, like, this comes down to the truth as well, that, like, the Lord hates those who don't keep their <coughs> word. Like, not only has God got his word and the truth in his word, but then there's also us. Like, we've got our own truth and our own word. Like, if you say to somebody, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this for you, and you don't keep to it, then you're lying yourself. Because, like, when you're saying you're going to do that thing for a person, what, are you lying? Are you saying that you're going to do it and you're not really going to do it? That's lying to them. So if you're saying that, you need to be saying that with truth, knowing that, yeah, I'm definitely going to do this for that person. Mm. And like it says, the Lord hates those who don't keep to their word. Mm. So basically, the Lord hates liars. Yeah. And like, it just made me think, like, the, w the one person we want to please in this world is who? Mm. It's God. Oh, like, we don't have to please anybody else but God. And like, um, honestly and truthfully, I'll say in my life, I've probably told a couple of lies in my life. <laughs> and if you're honest about it, most of us probably have. But not always in a... I can't say that I've always lied in a, in a bad way. Like, sometimes in life we do tell white lies. And sometimes we tell them to try and save a person's feelings sometimes. Like, do you know, there may be some situations that, come, that occur where actually it's better to kind of twist the truth a little bit just to bless someone's heart <laughs> you know not that you should lie but do you know what i mean like sometimes people do have to people do tell white lies in their lives but like obviously we shouldn't we should just tell the truth because it comes back to like or use wisdom you should yeah you shouldn't yeah. hurt them by telling them a lie it's better to hurt them by telling them the truth although you don't want to do either but yeah. if you do tell a lie <laughs> 
it will always come out in the end and then you end up putting the dino on yourself because it comes out and then you're the person well obviously you're the person in the wrong for lying anyway but then everybody else knows you're you're in the wrong for lying because if you tell a lie to someone they don't know that it's a lie do they to them it's the truth mm -hmm. so yeah. like is that do you see what i mean yeah. but um but he delights in those who do he delights in those people that do tell the truth and that they keep to their word that if you say something to someone that you've you've made a promise to them so you've got all like go through with that and like make sure that you do that thing for that person because you might just say it off the slip of your tongue but that person is going to remember what you've said oh I'll do this for you they're going to remember that whereas you might forget they're going to remember and then that can hurt their heart that you've not followed through and done those promises that you said you would um, and lastly it goes into speaking in truth um, if you go to Ephesians And in chapter four, verse 25. So Paul, so put away all falsehood and tell your neighbor the truth because we belong to each other and don't sin by letting anger gain control over you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry for anger gives a mighty foothold to the devil. So, this just says it all here. So put away the falsehood and tell your neighbour the truth. We belong because we belong to each other. Like we belong to each other, we are all each other's neighbours. So we're to tell the truth to to one another. And like we all wanna live by God's truth, which is to love God and to love thy neighbour. And we wanna live as Christ we wanna be like Christ. And Christ wasn't a man that would lie. He would speak the truth. Well, he'd go out and he'd speak God's truth to people, but he'd also speak the truth to people when they needed it. He wouldn't, you know, like, mess about with it. If people needed to know the truth, he'd tell them that. And if we want to live as Christ, then that's another thing that we've got to add into our lives and live by and abide by. And I just want to finish off in Zechariah, if I can remember where to find it. I think it was this way. Two books before my feet. Right, I've got I'm going to go then. Mm. Okay, hi there. Yeah, thank you. Sakura chapter eight. Verse 16. Uh, but, this, but this is what you must do. Tell the truth to each other. Render verdicts in your courts that are just and lead that to peace. And that lead to peace. So, like it says right there, like plain and bold, but this is what you must do. Tell the truth to each other. So that pretty much says it all. That, like, just like although I didn't really think like truth was a massive thing because it's not really something you think of too much but then going through this I realized that truth is really such a big part and honesty that's all part of like um oh, what's the word integrity. yeah integrity and also oh I can't think of the word being humble that's it. Humility. <laughs> Humility, humbleness, that's all part of the same thing. It all ties into one, being humble, honesty, like your character, integrity, all kind of really does roll into one and that just speaking that truth to people is obviously so important and that realising God's truth and that we are living by his truth and just always speaking the truth and being honest in everything that you do just there might be times that you face a situation and sometimes you might be you might be thinking up things in your head of oh what can I say, how can I get out of this, what what lie can I tell but just 
that's the devil putting that into your head because the devil lies, the devil deceives people and if you're lying, you're going to deceive people and the last thing we want to do is act as the devil, we want to be acting as Jesus Christ. So you just cancel those things out of your head and even if you know it's going to hurt someone, just think about how you're going to say it and just be honest and tell the truth to people like no matter what the situation. And um, yeah, that's it. Really. Hello and God bless you on the wonderful name of Jesus Christ and uh, great sharing Abby thank you and um, you know what Abby was sharing was really great and uh, truth is everything and within truth is you know our value righteousness you know who we are in Christ relationship everything is true that is all truth you know and it's just really amazing what God's got in store for us as we continue to seek him in that relationship and you know, God's just working a few things in my heart, and obviously, I, I, I'm probably going to be sharing um, on relationship because it's just so so important. And uh, that relationship sets you up for everything. It gets you established. It gets your it gets you your foundation, who you are in Christ. Because you know, it's, when we go into relationship, we're not going in just to pray, but we're going into make God's heart our heart like David was a man after God's own heart you know and, and he he went to God he you know he worshiped God you know and that's that's the point that we need to go go to God is that relationship we're not just going to pray we're going for his heart God I want your heart to be my heart and that's what it's all about this is what this walk is all about is going to God and chasing his heart, chasing the truths of his word. You know, and Jesus Christ said, you know, he, he's going to send the comforter, which was the spirit of God. You know, the spirit of truth that is going to lead us into all truth. And it, uh, which I think is in John 14. And it's just truly amazing. And that's what God has set up for us. He wants, he doesn't want us to be ignorant, but he wants us to be established, knowing who we are in Christ, that we have the truth in our heart and in our mind and that when th things arise and what you know what Abby was sharing you know on how to deal with things that is dis discernment which is in your spirit and and uh, and you can only discern situations when you're in relationship with the father how to deal with different situations God will just work within you and you just know how to deal with it because we are as Christ now and as we continue to go to God we're gonna walk just as he walked as he is, so are we. Well, how is how is Jesus Christ? Well, he's on the right hand side of God. He has all power and authority, and we are as he is. So, as we continue to go to him and to seek the Father, we're just going to respond as Christ would respond, because we're in that neutral and agreement. You know, and there's a couple of things I want to share because it just really touched my heart. And it's just, this is all God wanted was, was relationship with you, which is fellowship, communion, which is the Greek word koinonia, which is full sharing. I like to use the word commune because it's just, that's personal to me. And so, um, let's go to Genesis and we're going to read from Genesis all the way to Revelation. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, I'll just go... Genesis 1, 27. And it says, So God created man in his own image, in the image of God. Created he, him, male, and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over every living thing that is upon the earth. I love it. See, God created us in his image. <laughs> it's just so touching to me. He created us in his image and he was pleased. He was pleased with that. He was, he was excited. Okay? And what did he do? He gave them dominion. He said, you subdue the earth. 
you have dominion over everything that moves. You know, just like her father would give everything to his son. You know, here is your inheritance, son. And this is our inheritance now, that we are the expressed image of Jesus Christ. That was amazing. We are. Mm -hmm. And Jesus Christ was the expressed image of the Father. Mm -hmm. And whatever Jesus Christ came and done, if God came down himself, that's how he would have done it. Mm -hmm. just really, in the, it's just really special. And now, everything that Jesus Christ done, that's what God would have done. Now we're, we're in the world, and we can do everything that Jesus Christ would do on earth. That's how powerful this thing is. And as we just become meek and humble and just come into that relationship and submitting ourselves to God, He is gonna He the Spirit of God that God's given us, that is gonna lead us into that. It's gonna lead us into all truth. Like I said, it says, study to show thyself to prove unto God. A man, what was it, rightly dividing the word of truth. And God said to me, Danny, it's not you that rightly divides it. It's the Spirit of God within you. It's the Spirit of God that separates mind and spirit. Our mind, five senses mind, <coughs> and the spirit mind. Okay? Um, let's go, just jump over to chapter 6 of Genesis. And I'm going to read this from the ISV. And this is just so touching, like, honestly. Help me, God. Okay, and it says, These are the family records of Noah. Uh, verse 9. These are the family records of, of Noah. Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless during his time. Noah communed with God. And that's why he was righteous in that time. And that's why God honoured him. Why? Because he communed with God. <laughs> That's all God wants. God wants us to go to him and for us to chase, chase his heart. Like a son would do everything that, you know, his dad would do. Copy everything that his dad would do. That's all God wants from us. He wants us to have that full sharing of communion with him. Oh, so it's, oh, that means so much to me. So much, you know, like... And if you read this whole chapter, you know, God, God was not happy and he flooded the earth and you can look at that as he baptized the earth of unrighteousness <laughs> cleansed it to righteousness it's all symbolic man it's it's nuts it really is nuts and then we can look at the noah's ark right and that was full man that was full to the brim there was no empty room in that ark and it's the same in this new covenant god wanted to fill us with with his spirit we're, we're occupied, man. There is no empty rooms for anything to come in and take that away from us. It's so special. It really is. And then I, I, I was reading about Cain and Abel and how Cain killed Abel. And, you know, God was like, what, why did you do that? And I can't remember the record completely, but... Um, you know, God, God, you know, God was like, well, what are you doing? And he's going to cast him out. But still, God wouldn't let nothing happen to Cain. Mm -hmm. And the mercy was just like, oh, my God, like, God, you're just so gracious. Mm -hmm. And it, that wasn't even a new covenant. And just God's grace on him, no one will kill you. And God made sure of that, even though he, just God, why? Because God knew their value. God, God even said, I've created man in my image. But the serpent came and he deceived. And, and God gave me a picture when I was reading, when Adam and Eve and the serpent came. I, I, could, I just imagined Eve. Adam and Eve sat there together and they took the, and, and Eve took it, bit it, and then said, here you are, Adam. And that's how it was read as I was reading it. Here you are, Adam. And Adam's, all right, cheers. Not conscious like we are. <laughs> <laughs> took, the, took it. And then God was... God, God came, walk in, as it, that's how it pronounced it, but obviously he wasn't. And um, Adam, where are you? 
and he was, you know, he took the fig's leaves and hid, hid behind them because he knew what he did was wrong. And he was like, did you eat from the tree? Well, it's the woman you gave me. <laughs> And right there, that was just that sin, right there, passing the buck. If he just would have repented, like, I think it would have been completely different. But he passed the buck and it just made me chuckle. But God's grace, God knew where Adam was. God knows where we are. There's nothing to hide. Even if we mess up, we just go and we just say, Father, I love you. And I know that's not what you've proclaimed my life to be. That I'm a brand new creation. And when these old man nature, do you know like the thoughts, well, let's say, like I, I give you the example when I used to look at women, and that, that say, say something like that would try and come in, I'd say, Father, I so thank you that you have not proclaimed that on my life, and that I am a brand new creation, Father, and that I do not look from that eye anymore, because I am a man of righteousness through the blood of Jesus Christ, and that you have cleansed me from head to toe. And that you have loved me and you have plucked me out of this world and placed me within your hand. And that not even death itself can take me from your hand. Because I have beaten death through the blood of Jesus. And I worship you and I thank you for what you have placed upon my life. And I will stand and I will proclaim your word. Because the devil was defeated. And I have died to myself and I am alive unto you. That when Jesus Christ died, I died with him. And when he rose, I rose with him. And that I am seated on the right hand side of God. Sitting in heavenly places with all spiritual blessings. Because that's what you have proclaimed in my life. And that is what you have predestinated in the foreknowledge. That's what you've had planned in my life. Let's actually go to um, First Peter. Abby was there earlier. And it says, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through se separating, sanctifying, okay, is separate, of the Spirit unto obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. That's so awesome, man. In, our, in God's foreknowledge, he separated us. He knew what was to come. He knew what he had planned. What he was going to do in our life. It's just truly amazing. What he knew, what Jesus Christ knew, what he had to do. You know, and um, I just think it's truly amazing that God really has called us where we don't have to be governed by our feelings. And I, I, I was talking to one believer and, and she didn't agree with me. And she was saying, well, you haven't lost anyone, you know, well, what if someone died? You haven't lost anyone real close to you. Jesus Christ grieved. And I said, yeah, he might have grieved, but that didn't stop him moving. He still accomplished what God had set before him. You know, and I really believe God is, is going to, you know, as we continue to seek him, I know that nothing can trouble me. I'm just so set free because God's called me to that place. If, if I wake up and I don't feel blessed, that doesn't determine my outcome because I know the Word of God says I am blessed. If I don't feel it, that doesn't matter. The Word of God says I am blessed and I'm going to receive that and I'm going to run with that. If something happens, it's like, you know, obviously, you know, Grampy's passed and, you know, you know I went in there and I, I believe God was going to raise him from the dead. And I went in there with that intention and I prayed for about five, ten minutes, commanding him to rise, because I truly didn't believe it was his time to go. And I still don't believe, but that's, that's my opinion. And that guy, I really believe, you know, God had, you know, his hand in the whole situation anyway, because of his wonderful grace. You know, and, but God knew the outcome. And even though he didn't get up, I still worship God and I still thank him and I still thank my, uh, God for my grandpa's life because God is faithful and that ain't going to discourage me. I'm going to stand strong because I know the bigger outcome. Even if my mum or dad were to pass, that would not stop me. I would praise and I would praise my father. That would not stop me because why? This is a temporal place we're staying at and we need to hold fast. This is a hotel, guys. 
the devil wants us to be emotioned and pulled down all the time. There's time I feel, you know, we, you know, we work, we feel tired, and sometimes I do feel tired, but that still doesn't determine that I'm not blessed. Oh yeah, wow, I feel a bit tired, but I'm still blessed. I'm still right with God. It's just amazing what God's really got on offer, and if we don't know what's on offer, we're not going to get to that point. And I really believe we can get to the point, and it's and where we get to that point is the truth. It's the truth of God being established in our hearts that when these things come, it's not going to rock us. It's not going to affect us because we're in the new man. We're, we've got this, we're spirit filled people with power. We're endured with power from on high. It's truly powerful what God has set before us. And I love you guys and God has so much in store for us. I'm going to leave it there. That's all I wanted to share. And I love you, God bless, continue to just deep, get your hills, dig them in, and get into that communion with God. That's all he wanted. I, I read that uh, in Genesis 6, 9, and it brought tears to my eyes. Because it's just so special. God wants us to commune with him. It's so important, guys. And um, obviously, next time I teach, I know I'm going to probably hit relationship again. Um, because that's where it all begins. That's where we find out who we are in Christ. And you know, it's like when I was in that in that um, calf, and that guy was there. It's just so awesome. I was just, do you know what? All I had to say really was, come out in the name of Jesus Christ. And I just could have watched it come out. But I was just I had so much zeal in me. I was just like, come, 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 because I'm just excited. <laughs> but all I had to say was just, you know, that's it. But anyway, I love you guys. God bless. Okay, Danny, before we finish, can you just explain that, what you was talking about? The testimony. About? Okay, yeah. so, um, me, Dad, Amber, and Jason came as well. You know, we walked into the calf, and we had little Dre with us. He's a, he's a special boy. But yeah, we walked into the calf, and, um, you know, we, we uh, got some breakfast, and these two old guys walked in. And, um, you know, I seen him, I was like, hey, how are you doing? <laughs> he was like... Yes, I'm doing good. How are you? You're a fit, strong lad, aren't you? I was like, I am. <laughs> and so anyway, they came in. We we got our food and we just started eating. And um, you know, God just worked up in me and just said, you know, before I go, I know you need prayer for healing. What's going on with your with your hips? And he said, um, no, I said hips and leg. And he said, um, oh, yeah, it's, um, I've got really bad knee problems. And I said, it's your right knee, isn't it? Your, your, your left knee, isn't it? And he said, no, my right. I said, yeah, that's what I, I, that's what I meant. I was like, yeah, your right, my left. And um, he was like, yeah, yeah, you know, it's completely just done in. So um, I just prayed for a minister to him. I said, how does it feel? And he was like, yes, yeah, yeah, it's a bit better. And then God just showed me one of his legs shorter. So I said, one of your legs, I said, actually, I said, God's showing me that one of your legs is shorter and he's going to grow out right now. And he said, oh, all right. And um, so I said, sit in the middle chair. You know where it is, by Labrooks, where we go, in there. And I, so I got his legs like this. And I said, are you ready, mate? To his mate, I said, watch this. And it was about an inch and a half shorter and I just commanded in the name of Jesus Christ for his leg to come out right now. And his leg just went... I was like, come, 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 right now, in Jesus Christ's name. And just went, pop. <laughs> like that. And this guy's like, and I was like, what do you think of that? And he was like, well, crazy that is. <laughs> it was just awesome. And so I just got to pray for him, just speak life over both of them. Got to pray for both of them, speak life over them. And they just got touched, man. The presence of God just really touched this guy. And he was like, oh, and bless you, my child. You know, like, oh. I was just like, you're so, you're so sincere. And um, yeah, it's just really great. And today, actually, I was in work. And um, I was outside having a cigarette. And this guy, these um, two Jamaican guys, they were walking up. You know, like, wah, 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 like that. You know, they are great personalities. And one of them came up to me and said, can I have a cigarette, please, mate? And I was like, yeah, sure, not a problem. And he was like, is there any jobs going? And I said, um, 
Uh, you'll have to check on the uh, website. It's right there, www.pharmacyplus.co.uk. And I said, why don't we just pray and ask God to find you a job? And he was like, what, you go to church? I said, I love God and the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, I said, come on. So I just prayed and I just started to speak life over him and just, you know, just started to proclaim things in his life. And um, just for the peace and for the love of God to touch his kid's heart. And this kid just got wound up and the presence of God just really hit this boy. And um, he was like, can I have your number? Can I have your number? I was like, yeah, sure. I, I, and he didn't have his phone on him. I said, if you wait here, I'll just go get my car keys and I'll give you a card. So I went and got a card and that and just blessed him. And he was like, you know, I'm really glad I met you today because, you know, I used to go to church and I, I backslid a lot. You know, I got really discouraged and um, then God gave me a word. And I thought it was for his friend, but it was actually for him. And I thought, you know, his friend was really gifted in music and, you know, God really wants to prosper him in that. And I said that to him. He said, yeah, he actually does really love music. And then we continued speaking and he was like, and I used to sing in the church. I said, that's what it was. God was showing me that God has really gifted you with that voice and he wants you to continue to... Um, continue to chase after that and pursue that and God's got a real big calling upon your life and he was asking all the questions you know do you go to church I was like no that's religion we, we run a home bible fellowship and God really wants to wants for us to really use the power of God in our life and so he should be coming up next week and it was just really great because that guy got touched and he was like so what do you think of me then and I, and I just started sure you've got a big heart and he was like I'm actually drunk at the moment and I said that really doesn't matter man I see your heart and I see your true value but the thing was <coughs> at first you know I love it because people come with that face and then after when you pray and you, you just speak truth it just knocks it out of them you just see a transformed face mm -hmm. and that the heart is open mm -hmm. because that boy Love God, and you know, he said to me, No, I, I was waiting on God, and then nothing happened. And I, and I just really got to speak truth and just really give him the kingdom. And it just really, God convicted his heart. I didn't convict his heart, but I just hold it truth. And it was God that does the convicting. So, God bless you. Okay, so I'm just going to close out with a word of prayer. So, Father God, we just truly thank you for your wonderful love and goodness and grace and mercy upon our lives father and we just want to truly just thank you for everything you do father that you will continue to lead us into all truth father that you will continue to establish your love in our hearts that you will continue to perfect us in love father because you truly have called us to a great and high mighty calling father i just thank you for each person in the room father that you will continue to bless them and show them great revelation in the wisdom and knowledge of Jesus Christ. So, Father, we thank you yet again for a wonderful night. We thank you for the movement of your word. And we just thank you this day in the wonderful... Oh, and, Father, I just thank you that you would continue to show us, Father, that it's not about us praying for things, Father, but it's about us getting in relationship, Father. That is not about us anymore. It's not about what we want and what we can get, Father, but it's about being selfless, just like Jesus Christ did in the wilderness, Father. So I just truly thank you that we can continue to be selfless and continue to seek your heart, Father, not the things of this world, but the things of you, that we can continue to keep our eyes not upon the world, but upon you, Father, and that you would just add everything to us anyway, because you're faithful and you're just, Father. And we're just, just as you are. So we just thank you for this right now in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.